Hello and welcome back to Patriot Contraptions. Today I'm counting down the top 10 mistakes I see at cardboard boat races. Starting off with number 10, building a cardboard box. It's very easy to build, but it's not going to be fast in the water, and it's just going to be frustrating when everybody passes you at that first buoy. Number nine, allowing enough room for your team in the boat itself. Let's face it, building a small boat is easy, but when you have to put eight people in it, it's going to be cramped on the lake, and you won't be able to paddle very well. Number eight, forgetting to allow the time to paint your boat. It's very easy to get carried away in the build and forget that you have to allow time to paint and about three hours for that paint to dry before the race. So you show up with a boat that's not painted and the water gets in it and you sink. Kind of a waste of time there. So number seven, safety. You can get carried away in decorating your boat very easily and building things that come over the people who are going to be in the boat or having your sides even come up and over the people in the boat. Do not do this. It's simply unsafe for you. If your boat tips over in the water, it could be an issue. And oftentimes this is caught by the refs and all that decoration is gonna be forced to be cut off. So remember safety when you're building that cardboard boat. It's better for you, it's better for everybody. Number six, fitting the cardboard layers together without air gaps. Having an air gap in the cardboard layers is when you take two layers and instead of sticking them face to face on each other, you try to overlap them like this. That gives you this little gap in here where air can get in and when air can get in, water can get in, your cardboard boat gets soggy and you sink a lot quicker than other boats. Number five, types of glue and where to use them. Sometimes racers will look at other racers and see them painting their boats in glue. That's called a waterproof glue. A lot of times I don't have money to buy waterproof glue and the racers I've talked to don't. But they'll go and they'll paint their glue instead in what's known as Elmer's or school glue and it's not going to be the same. The Elmer's glue is water soluble, the waterproof glue is obviously waterproof. So remember that just because you see somebody else doing it doesn't mean they have the same material resources you have. Use your glue on the inside. Use your paint to waterproof your boat. Number four comes right after the types of glue, and that is use enough paint on the boat to actually get you around the racetrack. You can get paint from a lot of times your neighbors just knock on their door, you'll get paint there. But what I see at races is people coming out and their decoration layer is their only layer of paint on their boat. This one layer is not thick enough to keep water out. You want to have about three layers to keep that water out and keep your boat up on top of it. Number three, having too thin of sides on the boat. What happens when you have too thin of sides is your boat's sides buckle. And normally you see this a lot of times in the second or third races where a boat's going and all of a sudden its sides just cave in. That's because you only have about three layers thick there or something. And all the flexing of trying to turn those corners has done its damage and that boat side just can't take anymore and it flexes in and the water comes pouring over it. So have about five layers thick, make sure it's nice and sturdy all the way up to the top, not just the bottom where the water touches and you should be fine. Number two on my list is kind of a goofy one. It's when the boat, you see them a lot of times at the start line, they'll just flip right over. The reason they flip over like that is because they've got a narrow boat and their center of gravity is way up above the boat. So normally what happens is you're building your boat and you decide, oh, I want to sit up in it like a canoe. Well, sitting up in a canoe is great because you're not going very fast. You're able to balance that boat out. Canoes are fairly wide. A lot of them are about three feet wide sometimes even. So they've got a lot of stability. But when you try to incorporate that into a thin boat and sitting up in the air, puts all that weight up there, and it's kind of like balancing on one leg. Your boat is very easy to tip over, and thus you flip at the starting line. So don't have a thin boat with a high center of gravity. You're going to flip over, and it's not going to be very fun for you. Number one, and by far the reason I picked this as number one is because it's the most frustrating thing for the rowers out on the lake. 
and sometimes for me to watch because I know it's easy to avoid and it's having too tall of sides on your boats. This is just one of those things where I get frustrated about it watching it because these guys are giving their all and they've got two foot tall sides on their boats and a little 13 year old kid in there and he can't even reach the water with his paddle to have a chance at winning. So you don't need to have two and a half foot tall sides. You don't even really need two foot tall sides. A lot of my boats have had 18 inch tall sides or 16 inch tall sides is about where I normally end up. Maybe if you've got like really light crew members in there, like 80 or so pounds each or something, you can get away with a lesser height on the sides. Just remember that side also has to be able to be strong enough to keep the water out as well, as we talked about in one of our previous steps. So there you have it. That's my top 10 countdown for the mistakes I see at cardboard boat races. Hope you can avoid them now. That's why I'm making this video. I want you guys to be able to avoid it and have a successful racing career out on the lake. So let's top them down one more time real quick for the record. Don't build a cardboard box, number 10. Number line, allow enough room for your rowers. Number eight, don't forget to paint your boat. Number seven, remember safety. Number six, fit your cardboard layers together firmly. Number five, don't use water soluble glue to paint your boat with, it's not gonna be the same. Number four, remember to use enough paint. Number three, don't make your sides too thin. Number two, ha having a high center of gravity is a bad idea. And number one, please don't make your sides so tall that the rowers can't reach over them. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, Patriot Contraptions. It helps me a lot, uh, keeps me motivated. And also, you'll see my other cardboard video out there entitled How to Actually Make a Cardboard Boat That Wins. And I recommend watching it for all the fine points that I wasn't covering in this video. Thanks again. Have a fantastic day. Patriot Contraptions, signing out.